The Ceylon Bank Employees Union convened a press conference today and emphasized that people with political connections to the two main state banks have not paid nearly 200 billion rupees of debt. Currently, there is a debt of close to 2 trillion rupees. That means that the first 10 government institutions have almost 2 trillion in defaults. And on the other hand, if we consider businessmen and personal loans, the amount is almost 200 billion. In this way, the loans obtained by the powerful, who obtain political favours and have large political influence, are mostly in the top 10 list in these two main state banks. Due to the increase in the interest rates of the loans given to the people and the increase in other interest rates in the country, the banking system is at serious risk. There is a cap on individual loans based on the availability of capital of the bank. It is in the central bank regulations. In 2007, according to the central bank's guidance and regulations, the government and some government agencies have removed the cap on these limits, resulting in loans being provided unconditionally. That's how they have taken such loans. The affluent people in possession of these inactive assets in the banking system, powerful people default on loans from state banks by exerting political influence under various governments of the country. Then, in the these budget proposals, we have a problem when we create an inactive asset management company and take over these loans from the banking system to that particular company. Even as of today, the economic experts of the country have not explained how to clean the balance sheets of the banking system. Therefore, as a responsible association, we declare that this is a method to cut off the loans given to their henchmen in various governments in the past while trying to slash this debt through the funds of the working masses. It is very clear that the creation of this non-profiting asset management company is based on the bad bank concept of budget proposal.